The Ralph M. Parsons collection is unique in that it encapsulates the, a kind of arc uh, in photography during the three decades of the post-war period and allows us to kind of understand the move from a, a kind of more social documentary mode to a more personal, subjective mode. But in terms of a documentary-specific focus, no, MoCA didn't really have that history until the Parsons collection came in to being at MoCA. The character of the Parsons uh, acquisition allowed MoCA to represent a famous story about the development of photography in the post-war. This isn't social documentary in the traditional sense. These photographers did not set out to depict the slums of urban America in order to tug on our heartstrings or tug on our policy. They were really going out and photographing their ideas of that time period. You have to consider them as kind of interested voyeurs on the American kind of social landscape in this period. I think if we go back to one of the earliest persons in the Parson collection, in terms of who was shooting really from the street, we should talk about Helen Levitt. Levitt actually didn't want to change the conditions of New York. She was experiencing New York. I think Helen Levitt's pictures, especially her pictures of children playing in the streets, do other things. You kind of get a feel of the heat of the city when the fire hydrants are spraying onto the kids playing. And I think that there's a kind of tenderness to them and sweetness. Every photographer, when they're taking a photograph, even though they might feel it's completely familiar to them, there's still an outsider experiencing it. One of the great things about like looking at Frank following Levitt is Frank is an outsider. And Frank is trying to literally understand American culture and depict it. I think his perspective as a, as a non-American brought something unique. It allowed him, it gave him some permission to, um, to take pictures of things that were still taboo or difficult for the audience of, of photo consumers in Life magazine. When Frank recognizes the kind of stereotype of the black nanny holding the very, very white child, he's looking at that in terms of all of the contradictions that that photograph begins to say. Frank came to this country, traveled in his car, and showed us something that was happening in this country that the mainstream image world hadn't really reconciled yet. Photography was beginning to um, come out of its, its role in kind of journalism and um, the magazines as, as, a, as a kind of documentary phenomenon and come into a place of art. I mean, Arbus is an interesting person to talk about as a street photographer because yes, she was roaming and looking, but there's a much more formal aspect to her portraiture. And she's also asking the subject to connect. There is a move into the interior. Um, there is a move into, into kind of private space. Although there still remains this, this kind of notion that people exist out in the world, in the, in, in the public, and that the photographer is making incursions into the, into the public. Uh, but Arbus's, Arbus's work, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of kind of private looking. I think Gary Winogrand doesn't have very much self-portraiture in the work. I think it's about consumption. I think it's like a really amazing kind of energetic, it's almost like sculptural to a certain extent. And I think that his is like purely this relationship of what it is to roam and kind of collect. His pictures are, I mean, they're, they're all about crowds. They're about the, the kind of boisterousness of political and social life. You think about this guy who was, happened to be in the right place at the right time and whipped out his camera and captured something quintessential about crazy public life of America in the 1960s. Like, there's a crowd implied. It's, it's not a photography of, of isolation or existentialism like Robert Frank says. It's a, it's a photography of, of noise. I think that one of the interesting things about Danny Lyon is that he was actually a part of these movements. So I imagine him carrying his camera to document these moments, but then he was putting his camera down to protest as well. People talk about the new journalism, where the, the writer immerses his or herself in the subject matter or, 
or culture of, of that he or she is depicting that lends a peculiar thing to the to the affect of Danny Lyons' pictures because they're, they're melancholy pictures, they're tender pictures, they're they're kind of they're full of pathos. Freelander isn't interested in the human condition. Freelander's interested in his condition in relationship to the human condition, and Freelander's interested in rewriting the rules of a photograph. By the time we get to Friedlander, we're, we're into postmodernism somehow. He is not afraid of blown out exposures, and often you would see his own shadow in, in the picture. You, that, that's the shadow of an artist, and not the shadow of a, of a documentarian or a commentator. I think that Friedlander was interested in the kind of challenges of composition. With the way that uh, photographers work in terms of observing, that it is a set of kind of complicated positions that we put ourselves in that are familiar and unfamiliar, that go back and forth from insider and outsider. But I think that photographers, besides working on the idea of the social agenda in relationship to the importance of documentation, that what they're doing is trying to answer their own questions through the images that they make.